finish, that is from Tim Ree. What ran through your head as that ball dropped towards you? Turn, swivel, hit it on target and hit it hard. With me today is a great American, a gent whom I honestly find truly inspirational. Rising from St. Louis, Missouri to reach the peaks of world football via a career which has become a masterclass in tenacity, belief and patience paying off and then some. At 35 years old, he's experiencing the season of his life, aging like a fine Nebbiolo, scoring Premier League goals, unfurling incredible World Cup performances, even unleashing dazzling techers. What a joy it is to see him living out these dreams and even more so, to have him here now to tell us about them. It's Fulham captain, man bun clad pillar of the US men's national team backline, all round magnificent human being, Mound City Maldini. It's the one and only Mr. Tim Ree. Wow, Raj. What an intro that is. But it's all true, <laughs> which is really quite remarkable. Let's talk about the international level. You never played for the US at youth level. You got your first call up in 2010 friendly against South Africa under the great Bob Bradley. However, it wasn't exactly smooth sailing from there. Yours really, when you look at it, it's an international career peppered with years-long absences. And I do wonder, as an elite athlete, what does that feel like, you know, getting those calls from Greg Berhalter and then not either not getting them or getting calls to say you've not been picked? How did he explain it to you? And how did you make sense of, of that disappointment to yourself? How, how do you keep it from eating away at you? I kind of looked at the bright side. Uh, yeah, listen, my international career has been up and down for sure. The one thing I wanted on my bucket list still was in terms of a career was was to to play in a World Cup. And, you know, as, as things kind of started to go, having phone calls with with Greg and it was it was always, oh, we're going to go with these guys. And um, listen, you, you understand. I, I made a decision for for myself and for my family to, to miss out on a camp. Which was it a World Cup qualifying camp? Yeah, it was. It was the second camp. Obviously, in the first camp, I played El Salvador, didn't play against Honduras or Canada. And the next camp, there was just things that, that came up. My wife had to go back, back to St. Louis. She had to make a quick trip. We don't have help here that covers us when, when we need it because I want to raise my kids. You know, I, I want my kids to come to me when they need something. So, you know, I had to, had to make that difficult phone call to, to Greg to say, listen, I, I can't come in, but, you know, I, I really want to be there and, and I'm still available. And I understood at the time that somebody could come in and, and, and take that take that shirt. That's, that is the nature of what we do. I, I, I understand that better than anybody, which is why I try to play and, and be available for every single possible game and play as many minutes as, as I possibly can, because I don't want to give that up. But sometimes you, you have to make decisions. And the way I looked at it was, okay, I wasn't going in for camps. Uh, I'm not happy about it. I don't agree with the decision. I don't think that there's anybody who's, who's playing better than me at that time, but I could at least then turn to my family and say, Hey, you know, dad's staying home. I've got four days off. What do you guys want to do? Basically, it had said, you know, if, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, I don't, I don't need a World Cup on my, on my CV, on my resume to, to validate what my career has been um, up to this point. But I do know how big a surprise it was for you to get a call up. We had an informal conversation about you joining us for live Twitches yep. during the World Cup. And you had not played for the US in 14 long months when you got that call saying you are on the World Cup roster. How would you hear about it? Are you told there'll be a call coming or does Greg Berhalter just pop up on your caller ID? And are you like, what does he want? I, I was like, you know, OK, I this uh, I'm pretty sure I'm reading this name right on my caller, or, you know, on my phone. But like, what could what could he possibly be telling me at this point? He had, I had already gotten the phone calls and, and gotten the disappointments and I'd made plans to go to Disney with the kids. You know, to see his name pop up and I was just like, no way, like this, this could not, not be possible. It took some convincing. I gotta be, I gotta be completely honest. I had to, I had to be convinced. Um, you serious? Yeah, I did. Uh, listen, I, I, I can be completely honest with it. The way things had, had kind of gone, I, I just wasn't in the right place mentally right then and there with that first phone call to say, yeah, I'm there. Because like, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't fully confident that, that they were confident that I could help the team. 
And so, you know, I, I, I told him I had to sleep on it. God, I, I just admire so much your, your oral commitment to Twitch with me. I was committed. I was there. I was, I was there. What was it? It was supposed to be the Iran game, right? I was there. Yes. Like, we're back and forth. And, like, and then I was like, well, I can't do that now, guys. Sorry. 35 years old, making your debut in that tournament. And you had to balance that wonder of finally being at the World Cup with the responsibility of being a veteran. How did you approach your role with the team just arriving, but you were arriving as a MySpace gen in a team full of TikTokers? It was just going in there and making sure guys understood that, you know, anything could possibly happen and, and you make the most of, of the opportunity. You know, make the most of, of the days, make the most of the training sessions, um, but just, just enjoy it. Because I, I went in thinking, okay, if I'm going to go, I'm going to play. Like, and, and that's the, the mentality that I had. And, and so I was hoping that, you know, I could, I could instill that kind of in the other guys and, and say, right, of course, only, only a certain number of guys can, can play. There's only 11 starters, you know, so many subs you can make. So not everyone is going to be able to play. But if you go in having the mentality of I'm going to play, right, I'm not going to take this for granted because I don't know when this is going to come again. Um, you, you put yourself in, and you, you, the team kind of becomes more together and, and becomes more of a team and, and pushes each other. And, and I think that was my, my biggest thing going in there to, to kind of prove to these guys that like, it doesn't matter your age. You know, if, if you, you have the right mentality, the right mindset that you guys can, you, know, you guys can, you guys can do what you want. What moment stands out for you? Uh, I'd, I'd say, and this is the human side of me, right? Uh, the, after the Iran game, when emotionally, mentally, physically, that game is just, I mean, it's, it's got to be up there, right? Everything, all the lead up to then have both teams at the end of it emotionally drained and, and see their guys kind of on the ground, um, you know, crying, upset that their World Cup is over. We don't know what they've been going through. You know, we don't know what kind of pressure they, they're under. We know what kind of pressure we're under. We know what, what our goals, what our, you know, what, what our, what we wanted to do, what we wanted to achieve was, um, but you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. So to, to see those, those guys in kind of upset in tears um, and all of, uh, I think almost all of our guys going around and, and making sure that, that, you know, embracing them, giving them words of encouragement, you know, because they, you know, they played a hell of a game. Um, you know, that, that towards the end there, when, when they were throwing everything forward, it, it could have gone either way. Right. And, you know, I think, the, the human side, you know, seeing our guys, like I said, embracing them and, and giving them words of encouragement was just, that's the, the one thing on the field that, that will stick out to me. One of my favorite stories about you that came out during that World Cup was the one about Pep Guardiola coming up to you after a game saying, if you were 24 instead of 34, you'd be playing for me. To which you replied, I'm actually 35, Pep. <laughs> As attested by Pep, you are in the middle of what has to be considered one of the best seasons of your career at 35 years old. What does that feel like, Tim? And how do you explain it to yourself? I enjoy playing. Like I said, I, I still love playing. I still, you know, I still love going out to training and, and you know, learning every, every single day. And I know that, that my career is, is you know, going to come to an end at some point. Um, so why not, why should I, I not make the most of it? Why should I say, okay, I'm, I'm 35, maybe I should slow down. Well, why? You, you may as well just keep going and, and see how far you can take it. I, like, if you enjoy it, why, why give it up? Um, and, and that's kind of my mindset and, and I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. I'm, I enjoy coming to, to training every day. Um, and, and, you know, I think it, it shows in, in, in the games and in, in the trainings and, and it's just something that, that I enjoy doing still and, and so there's you know you may as well just keep going until, until you can't well, let's talk about something truly beautiful mighty full of football club a team you've been with for almost a decade now you become a pillar on that squad a leader on the team but can you describe what makes the club special to you convince you to commit your life to that place and, and to stick it out through all the ups and the downs you know, I, I'd always thought like, oh, that, you know, Craven Cottage, there's just something about it. There's something nostalgic, historic. You just look at it and, and all of a sudden uh, you're, you're going through the streets of the houses and it's like, bang, there. 
it just felt right to me. You know, through the ups and downs, I've, I've always wanted to challenge myself and, and try to become a, a better player, a better person. And, um, you know, I've been able to do that over the course of the, the last seven and a half years, um, you know, with the club. You're not the only American to share this dizzying Fulham season, oh wonder, playing alongside you, possibly the greatest scout American in our nation's history, Anthony Robinson. Can you describe the relationship that you two, both great Americans, but you're almost like a, a cop buddy movie duo, one young and bright eyed, the other a hard boiled vet who's seen it all. Yeah, it's there's that connection that, that we have. Um and, and in that way we can we can do things and and anticipate and, and do things before others, you know, understand what's going on. And I think it's it's only gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. And and I actually said, you know, if if I do make it to the World Cup, you know, I I I'm I want to play, obviously, but I, I want to play with, with Jed next to me because I know that he brings out the best in me and that I can bring out the best in him. Um, and, you know, thankfully, it's, it's kind of all worked out that way, especially, you know, at, at club level and then, and then uh, you know, at World Cup. And the form that you established last season in the championship under the fairly remarkable Marco Silva has continued into this Premier League season, which has been one which almost written by Fulham fan fiction. A lot of credit has to go to the manager and and the staff. He's brought the best out of out of pretty much everybody, uh, and and it's been it's just been so so enjoyable after after you know a couple of years that just weren't as enjoyable, um, weren't as fun, and and that is what what Marco and the staff have have brought back. You know they've a, a demand of course, uh, you know standards, high standards, but. You know, they've, they've brought fun back to, to the, you know, the squad and, and the team and, and everybody who's here. And included in this incredible season, your Boxing Day goal at Crystal Palace, 71st minute, smashing that ball into the net off a corner. Your first ever Premier League goal, just the fifth goal of your entire career. What ran through your head as that ball dropped towards you at the far post? Turn, swivel, hit it on target and hit it hard. The way it fell, I just, I, it almost looked in, in slow motion, and I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on this here. I, I can, I can do something with this, and you know, I just thought, well, why not? Just give it a go. Um, if it doesn't, if it doesn't go in, it doesn't go in. You can tell I, I don't score very often because I didn't know what to do for a celebration. Um, and then when it goes to VAR, I thought, oh, thank God, I didn't really do anything crazy for a celebration because, you know, that's embarrassing if it then gets called back. So, no, it's all, it, it was, it was nice. It all worked out in the end. Tim, you have dreamed big dreams and you have made them real. Not smoothly, mm-hmm. not always easily. What are your dreams now? The dreams for myself is continuing to, to play as long as I possibly can. Next World Cup be played at home in the USA. You'll only be 38, Tim Ream. You'll just be coming into your prime. I mean, why not? I'm telling you, age, it, there's... There's no point in talking about age these these days because there are so many guys who are still doing it. There are so many guys who are still playing at, at a high level. And if if the, if I had to pick a dream, that's that's my next dream. I, I said, you know, I'm I'm not gonna sit here and and throw in the towel on on an international career because, you know, when, until someone can can surpass me, um, you know, I'm why 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 throw it away? To you, Tim Ree, you human inspiration. Big love. Thank you, mate. Thank you. That was fantastic. Subscribe here for more Men in Blazers videos and courage. There's lots of-